Okay, so let's talk about self-advocacy for a little bit, okay? Um, for anyone who doesn't know what self-advocacy means, from my perspective, what it means is advocating for ourselves. It's speaking up for ourselves. It's championing for ourselves so that our needs can be met. And when we self-advocate, we are most likely to have our needs met and we're most likely to have desired outcomes because we are clear and consistent in what we need from somebody or from a system and we are resilient in it so we continue to ask for it and advocate for our needs. Why I want to talk about this is that sometimes what happens is we want other people, we want systems to, to solve the problems, meet our needs without us having to take a role of responsibility. So we can see this sometimes in healthcare, um, and it's something I've had my own experiences with, where we want the professionals to give us the answers and to fix it. Whereas the professional can only work within their remit, and it is our responsibility, if their remit isn't meeting our needs, to ask for referrals or to go outside of that one piece and create multiple ways of supporting that picture. Because often solutions... Some solutions are technical, there's an issue, the solution is very clear, and then other things are more complex. And when things are more complex, it can often be frustrating. So it can be much easier for us to be frustrated and to hand our power away or to expect other people to solve something than for us to take responsibility and the energy to advocate for ourselves. Now, when you have the privilege to advocate for yourself, this is perfect self-advocacy is easy enough to do. It doesn't mean we're very good at it if we have the privilege of being able to do it, but it does mean that it's possible. Some people aren't able to self-advocate for multiple reasons and they are not in a position in which they might have the energy or the skill set um, or be respected by others when they do this. And so that's where advocacy services become really important to use. Um, because that means that somebody's been trained to help advocate on your behalf. But for the majority of us and those of us who can self-advocate and choose not to, that's what who this video is for. And we choose not to for multiple reasons, usually because it's more comfortable to blame somebody than to take responsibility or because we're so frustrated we just wish somebody would solve it for us. But self-advocacy is really a key component in our needs being met effectively and the way we need them to be. Nobody knows you better than you. And if somebody is solving an area or supporting a part of your journey and not the others, it's really for you to figure out what you need and how you can support those parts. Because just because somebody else or a system can't see that doesn't mean that they're any less valid. And for me, self-advocacy is a really, really important part of assertiveness, of well-being, of healthy boundaries, of staying in our adult, of being empowered. It's about speaking up for ourselves, even when we wish other people would just know. And so that's a very simple way of describing self-advocacy from my point of view. It's a really important piece when we're dealing with things and we feel unheard. It's that we don't start silencing ourselves and that we advocate for what we need and for how we feel. And we do it in a way that's respectful to us and to others. And often I find that because we aren't self-advocating, our behaviour might become unacceptable and we become unheard anyway. And I see this happen a lot with different um, with different people's experiences. So self-advocacy is really about standing up for ourselves in a way that's respectful to ourselves and to others and in a way that allows our needs to be met as best possible. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any thoughts around it, do let me know. Take care.